Okay, our next lecture, the second uh, lecture of the Professor Sophie Mouryajno uh, about arithmetic and combinatorics on con convex con con coxeter freeze patterns. Sophie, over to you. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, I'm going to start by uh, reviewing briefly what we saw yesterday. So in yesterday lecture, we started with the, the notion of uh, continued fraction. And uh, we wrote two types of uh, fraction, one with a, a plus sign here and one with a, a negative sign. Um, and this, uh, this first expansion came from uh, approximation of the numbers with the integer part uh, taking the, the floor part. Um, and in this uh, expansion, uh, it came from taking approximation with the sailing uh, part. So it produced two different expansions for the same uh, number. And we addressed the question here, uh, what is the relationship between the, the two sequences of coefficients between the A's and the C's? So that was the first question. Then we went uh, over the notion of freeze patterns. And uh, they are very uh, elementary objects. They are arrays of numbers. And the numbers obey a rule, uh, which is here, which is called the unimodular rule. And so this, uh, this rule makes sense. Uh, Anytime you know how to multiply uh, numbers or and add them. So in, in any ring, you can imagine a, a freeze uh, taking values in any ring. But we decided to focus on the case uh, when the freeze have only positive integers. And uh, at first sight, it's not uh, obvious at all how to, to produce such uh, freeze patterns. So we asked this question how to obtain freeze with only uh, positive integers. So then we went uh, on the notion of uh, triangulations of polygons. And we claim that this uh, combinatorial model uh, gives uh, the answers uh, of the two questions. So you can read uh, the conversion formula for the continued fractions uh, in the triangulation. You need to choose uh, special triangulations with these two uh, exterior triangles. And this combinatorial model also uh, gives us the complete answer for the question two. Uh, you can count uh, triangles at the vertices of the triangulated polygons. And this will give you the first row of, uh, of a freeze pattern. So here is one of the very important result of this course. Uh, sorry, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, you don't see the screen? Is it better like this? Um, hi. Oh, sorry. We, I don't know. If I, if I move yeah. the window on my computer, it's, it seems that it moves. Uh... Yeah, we can do so the screen uh, a bit uh, to zoom the respect to the page of the paper. Um, so we didn't see the last bits on the left and right. I don't know. Is it better? I know it should be all right. Is it better now? Or? Yeah, 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 it's better. Okay. Uh, okay, let's. Um, all right, so uh, here is a, a very important result for the, the course, uh, this uh, conway coxeter uh, theorem. Um, so yes, yeah, yesterday we practiced uh, this uh, 
first theorem. So we practice the uh, a conversion we, with this uh, rational number. This is uh, the expansion uh, of the regular continued fractions. So we constructed a triangulation. So the data 2125 encodes this triangulation. It gives uh, the number of triangles. So we start with two triangles based on, one triangle based up, two triangles based down, and then five triangles based up. And then just counting triangles at the vertex vertices on the top row, uh, the, the sequence that we obtain is the coefficient for the continued fraction with a negative sign. Here we practice uh, the second part of the theorem. So going back to this picture, I can look at the sequence obtained here, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, by counting the, the triangles, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1. I write it here uh, in the first row of a freeze, cyclically, so I can repeat for 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1. And then applying the, the freeze rule, I compute the, the next rows. And at some point, it ends with a row of one. And inside the array, I only have positive integers. Okay, so that's illustration of the theorem. Okay, so for, for today's lecture, I want, as I said. Uh, so, sorry, one again. question. Sophie, one question. Uh, why you chose the that uh, succession of numbers of the polygon for one, three, two, one, one? On the paper before. In here, one, four, one, two, three, one, three, two, one. Why you chose that? So that's uh, what is written here is that from a triangulation. So I'm I'm gonna re uh, formulate again this result, but so the main result uh, is that. Taking a triangulation uh, of a polygon, I can count at each vertex, each vertex, how many triangles are incident to the vert vertex. So here I just count one, two, three, one, three, one. And it's a recipe. You just put this number in the first row of the freeze. Okay. And this guarantees that when you compute the next rows, you always have positive integers. You don't have rational numbers. You have integers, they are positive. And at some point, uh, you recover a, a row of ones. So okay. that's the recipe to produce a freeze with a positive integers. We're going to prove this uh, recipe, but it's a long uh, process to prove. And OK, so let's state it again. So the main theorem. <coughs> Main theorem says the following there is a bijection between the set of frees uh, with positive integers, so let's say over Z positive, and uh, the set of triangulations of polygons. So at this stage, it just sounds like a magic thing. I mean, there is no way one can associate the two objects. Uh, I mean, it's kind of uh, not, there is no reason why uh, this works, but we will work on the proof. Uh, the theorem is more precise. The theorem says that uh, you can also make a relationship between the widths of the freeze. So if W is the width, remember that the, the number of rows strictly between the rows of ones and uh, the number of uh, vertices in the polygons. So here you will need W plus three uh, vertices or size uh, or sides. Okay. And the bijection is completely explicit. It is given by the following recipe. If you know the freeze, you just have to collect entries in the first row. So I already mentioned that the freezes are periodic. 
So it's a repetition of uh, a certain number of values, W plus three. If, if W is the width on the first row, you have just a repetition of always the same W plus three values. So you take them and this encode uh, a triangulation. CI should give you um, should give you how many triangles uh, are attached to vertex I. So, so the, the easiest way to use the theorem is to start from here. You start from a, a triangulation. You just count, you put in a row, and you can compute the freeze. The other way is if you are if you find a freeze in the nature and look at the first row, then you should be able to reconstruct a triangulation of a, a polygon. Okay. So sometimes uh, I will use the following uh, name. So this sequence of CI, uh, let's say definition, this is called the quiddity se sequence. When I have a triangulated polygons, the quiddity sequence of the triangulated polygon is uh, the sequence of CI. <clears throat> so uh, this, Theorem is due uh, to Conway and Coxeter. So let me write down the names, but let me give you also the complete um, reference. So I prepared here. The, where can you find these results? You can find these results in this paper. So it's called triangulated polygons and freeze patterns. This is the abbreviation of the journal, uh, the Mathematical Gazette. It was published in 73. And actually the paper is quite funny. It's not a regular paper. It comes in two parts. So there is a first part uh, where the author uh, asks questions about freeze patterns. They define a freeze and then they ask questions. They ask 35 questions about freeze patterns. And then they give the answers later in the, in the same volume of the journal. And somehow the result is kind of lost in these questions and answers. So you cannot find the theorem by itself. It's just by picking results from several questions and several answers that you can figure out that uh, this beautiful uh, response. Um, which actually, uh, in another paper by Coxeter uh, on freeze patterns, Coxeter uh, gave uh, full credit uh, to John Conway. He said that John Conway found this correspondence between freeze and uh, triangulation of polygon. Okay. And so that's also why uh, we name uh, freeze patterns with positive integer. We call them often uh, Conway Coxeter to uh, give this reference. Um, so I have uh, prepared some information about the authors, uh, Coxeter and Conway. I put the picture in a chronological order. As you can see, they were both uh, British mathematician. Um, um, actually, uh, John Conway is one of the victims of the pandemic because uh, he passed away last year um, from complication after COVID infection. So it's a big loss. Uh, maybe you have heard their name uh, in other fields because they are very, very, very great mathematicians, uh, especially in group theory, finite group theory, um, but in many other fields, you can uh, uh, find the um, fundamental work. So I encourage you to briefly uh, to, to read the, the brief biography you can find, uh, for instance, on the Wikipedia page. So I stole the, this information from a Wikipedia page. Uh, I realized that I could have brought some uh, personal touch because I uh, had a chance to, to meet with John Conway. So here's John, here's myself. This is not uh, Coxeter, yeah, not possible. Uh, it's my collaborator, Valentin Obsienko. And in 2013, we organized a conference uh, in France. And it was a great pleasure to invite John um, to discuss uh, 
trees with him. Um, so, um, yes, I, I tried to, to, to learn more about Frieze and how did he figure out this correspondence between Frieze and triangulation, but John called this only a, a miracle. So I had no clue uh, how he managed to, to make this correspondence. And actually my, my first conversation with John was not on Frieze patterns, but on the Mendeleev uh, table for the chemical uh, elements, because he told me that in the plane for coming to France, he decided to learn them by half. So he asked me to test him. So I had a, a table and I, sh I should give a number and he would give me the, the element. He did no mistake, I don't know. <laughs> so he, he was a really, really funny guy. Um, and it was a really a, a great uh, time to have him uh, in presence uh, in the conference. So let's go back to uh, the results. Um, maybe we could start by practicing a small example. We already saw an illustration of this. And so let me start maybe with a very uh, first example that we can give, meaning if we start with the, the width one, W equals one. And if you ask how many frees with positive integer you can get. So what you could do is to put some unknown x variable, but then with the freeze rule, you will be forced to have two over x in the next. Then with the freeze rule, will, you will recover x here. So we could expect this freeze to be four periodic, but it is actually two periodic, uh, two over uh, x and so on. So if you want uh, positive integers, you can find two solutions. X should divide two. So X is either one or two. And this will give you two frees. The one with a cycle one, two, one, two on the first row, or the one with the cycle two, one, two, one in the first row. So I count this freeze like two different freezes. But of course, because they are infinite, if you look at them, they look the same, but you really need to understand that there is a, a start. So the, the one, if the starting point is one, or if it's two, it's not the same freeze. Uh, of course, if you look at uh, triangulation, so, the theorem says that you should uh, look at triangulation of a square. And if you look at triangulation of a square, you will find only two. You can either choose this diagonal or choose this one. So this one will lead to the sequence one, two, one, two. And the other one would lead to two, one, two, one. So again, as triangulation, they look the same because you can rotate the picture and it seems to be the same triangulation. But I, I count them like two different triangulations because somewhere I have a, a number on the vertex, on the vertices. This is vertex one, this is vertex two, vertex three, vertex four. So in this picture, I linked uh, vertex two and vertex four. And in this picture, I linked vertex one and vertex three. So they are not the same uh, triangulation although they look the same. And so what I'm saying is that here, we could have modeled by circular permutation, and here we could have modeled by rotation, but we don't do it, we count every uh, element. Okay, so that's the first uh, example. What about uh, one more row? If you are trying to understand freezes with two rows, you can do the same, just put uh, some unknown values, x1, x2, and then uh, compute. Oh, sorry, I need to make the shift nicer. 
Okay, then you, you compute um, with, a, with a rule, the unimodular rule, and you will find some constraints, arithmetical constraints, arithmetic constraints, uh, if you want to have only positive integers. Here, the constraint was kind of uh, easy. It was just x uh, should divide two. Here, it's gonna be a bit more tricky, but you can do it. And it actually, uh, something that I uh, suggested as an exercise, so it's uh, exercise two, if you look at the exercise sheets. And you can find five solutions. Let's say that without using the theorem, uh, you can do it by hand and find the five solution. Of course, if you use the theorem, it's more simple because you just need to look at a pentagon. And understand all the possible way to make a triangulation. So for example, you can do this. Uh, you can do this. And again, it's gonna be the same story. Under rotation, they all look the same. So you have uh, five uh, different uh, triangulation. Up to cyclic permutation, they will produce the same uh, quiddity. Uh, this one is, has quiddity one, three, one, two, two. The one uh, is two, one, three, one, two. So you can see that it's the same uh, by a cyclic uh, permutation. In terms of uh, x1, x2, uh, this means that uh, the possible value for x1, x2 uh, are one, one. So here's some for the, the answer for the exercise. Two, two, one, uh, two, three, and three, two. <clears throat> okay. Um, what about, uh, I can, we can discuss also maybe the case of W equals zero. Does this make sense? For the freeze, it, there is no real sense of freeze with empty rows. Uh, but on the triangulation, it gives a, a triangle. So it gives a quiddity one, one, one. And actually we can consider this as the, the following freeze. Okay, so it's a kind of uh, degenerate, degenerate freeze, but sometimes we can count it uh, as a freeze. All right, are there any questions? <clears throat> So, as I said, uh, the, my goal is to prove this theorem at some point. I cannot just go in the paper of conway Quetier and copy the proof because the proof is not written. It's just, uh, it's an, also an exercise to pick up the right information in right order to, to figure out why uh, this uh, works. Um, which is a kind of pity because uh, the result of this beautiful result uh, went uh, unnoticed because of this uh, presentation. And during about 30 years, people kind of did not know about it. But about 15 years ago, there was a, a revival on, on freeze pattern and there was new attention to this uh, beautiful result and new development and new connection with uh, modern mathematics. So I'll try to, to tell you more uh, of this development uh, in the last lecture, I guess. Okay, so- Hi, yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, will, I'm thinking about uh, um, the fact that uh, the sequence C1, C2 up to C, CW form is uh, the representation of a continuous fraction. Yes. Will there... this come up? Huh? Um, sorry, will this result for, follow from uh, the freeze, uh, the properties of the freeze, right? Uh, 
so far, uh, yeah, there, there will be a connection between freeze and and um, and continued fraction with negative sign. Uh -huh. um, there is an exercise. Let me check the, the number uh, on the sheets if you want to. Of course, I will discuss this uh, in the next lecture. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, the exercise seven. Okay. So in exercise seven, you can find the uh, a kind of direct uh, link between uh, uh, continued fraction and freeze. Of course, there is a kind of hidden link because they are both linked to triangulations. And uh, mm -hmm. I will, of course, uh, discuss this later in the lecture, but... Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. I was trying to uh, visualize uh, the map of the proof. <laughs> uh-huh. No. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Sorry. I had a slightly less <laughs> existential question, a more just a logistical one. Uh, can you just quickly go over where the actual x1, x2 values come from, corresponding to the... the uh, pentagons above like which actual pet like where do you kind of start counting c1 and c2 from going around the vertexes uh you mean uh, so here in this example the, the, your question re yeah is, yeah, yeah. Um, like the the pairs one 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 two i see where kind of where they they come from but like where do you actually start counting which ones are x1 and x2 and which ones are not not the because obviously there's there's one two and three but only two of those numbers ever appear on so the thing is that pairs. so in this uh, if i put if i know this uh, numbers i know the rest of the freeze because i can compute with um, uh with uh the, the the rule and i can at the beginning choose three variables if i start putting the c1 c2 c3 I cannot uh, take three variables because at the end I want to have ones. Uh, so that's uh, uh, so once I have the, the solution by the as quiddities, the five solutions, then I can just uh, write. Uh, liquidity here one three one two two and when i compute i will have two here so this give me the this solution but then if i choose another cycle if i choose another cycle here it will change these two values and so these five couples uh, came from the five different cycle i can uh, put in the first row that and makes a lot of sense yeah Thank you. Does this answer your question or? Yeah, but yeah, that does. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay, so let me give you more properties and we will see again this uh, X in the freeze and discuss. Um, so let's call this. Um, Theorem one. So it's just to give uh, a list of properties. Uh, the first uh, uh, it's, uh, it was already mentioned uh, yesterday, but today we're going to prove it. So let's me write it again. Uh, freeze uh, of width W. Uh, w plus three periodic. Second was already mentioned. Freeze uh, invariant under a glide reflection. Then now and this. Uh, is kind of new, uh, unless you have done one of the exercise, maybe this will. Uh, 
remind you something. So this uh, sequence in the first row, entries in the first row, if you start computing the freeze with uh, these values, these variables, uh, there is a, a kind of magic constellation that makes all the entries uh, polynomial in these CIs. Uh, polynomials in uh, these variables. So uh, uh, let me write down all the, the list of properties and then I, I, I make some, some comments. And the fourth uh, property is a kind of analog. Instead of computing the freeze from the first row, I can compute the freeze from any zigzag shape. If I know the value in zigzag, like it was the case here, I decided not to choose the first row as variables, but a, a diagonal here because I only have two rows. This determines the rest, and I can look at the expression obtained here. And one could expect a rational function, but here again, there is a, some magic constellation. And we only have uh, what is called a Laurent polynomial. So let me state and then comment again. So if I choose W uh, values, forming a, a zigzag in a zigzag from top to bottom in the freeze. Uh, then all the entries can be expressed as a Laurent polynomial. I will define. And it's even uh, better. I can also add the um, precision that the coefficients of these polynomials are um, positive integer. Okay, so uh, comments. Uh, first comment is that uh, item two uh, implies item one. Okay, because glide reflection, what is a glide uh, reflection? that the operations that uh, change uh, this picture a V to a lambda. Okay, so this uh, tells you that the, the structure of a freeze looks like this. It's a repetition of a piece after um, a flip and uh, a translation. So this implies the periodicity. So we, we're gonna prove, so what we need to prove is uh, item two, the, the glide symmetry. Uh, then um, for item three, uh, to prepare item three, uh, you can uh, look at the exercise, I think it's exercise three. And the, the list, let me check. So what was the exercise? So the, the exercise is just to do this on a small example. So sorry, I think I need more. Okay, let's say one, 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 C1, C2, C3, C4. And the exercise is, these are variables and just apply uh, the freeze rule to compute the next row. So I can, with the freeze rule, uh, compute the value here, which is gonna be C1, C2 minus one. Remember, I want this product to be one more than this product. 
So you can do it. Uh, so here it's going to be the same. And then uh, I can compute the value here on the dot. So I, what operation do I need to do? I need to do this product, add one, and divide by this, uh, subtract one, sorry. I had to do uh, the product of this, subtract one, and uh, divide by this. But if you do the product of these two and subtract one, you will have something that factors out uh, by C2. So when you divide by C2, there is a cancellation. And instead of having a, a rational expression, uh, you will get um, a, a polynomial expression. So and this is going to be this one, C1, C2, C3 minus uh, C3 minus C1. If you do it uh, on the next uh, value, it's the same with a shift of indices. C4 minus C4 minus C2. And again, now with this data, you can compute uh, the value here. So to compute the value, I have to multiply these two, subtract one, and divide by this. And again, I could expect a rational expression, but when I multiply these two and subtract one, I find something in which I can factor out uh, this quantity. So dividing will simplify. And I will, and you will obtain the following: uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, minus C3, C4, minus C1, C4, minus C1, C2 plus one. Okay, so this is a solution for exercise three, but uh, the interesting thing is to do it by uh, oneself, so that we really enjoy this uh, mysterious uh, cancellation. Okay, uh, for item four, uh, we need the definition. What is a Laurent polynomial? So it's a rational expression, but with sim very simple uh, denominator. So there are rational fractions that can be written as a ratio of a polynomial. So that's a regular polynomial, a multivariate polynomial. And in the denominator, you don't have any other arbitrary polynomial, but you only have a, a single monomial. You have something of the form x1 to some power, x2 to some power, x w to some power. So here p is a polynomial multivariate polynomial, as usual. All right, so in the, here we mentioned that in addition, uh, these uh, polynomials have um, positive coefficients, which is not obvious because uh, if you simplify, a rational fraction as a, a Laurent polynomial, uh, you may find a negative sign. It's not because your expression in the polynomial have positive coefficients, and when you simplify, uh, you cannot. You, you may produce a negative sign. So it's just um, uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, this positivity is not is not immediate at all. Okay, so what, what do I, uh, I call a zigzag. So imagine you have a, a freeze. So a zigzag means that you have X1, X2, for instance, I gave you the, so you don't have to alternate right and left. Zigzag means that you have a value XI and then XI plus one is immediately on the right, or you have xi and xi plus one is in the next row uh, on the left. Okay, so at each step, I can choose either to, to place the, the variable immediately on the right or immediately on, on the left. So this gives uh, me a, a zigzag shape in the freeze. 
So there are kind of two extreme zigzags. I can alternate right, left, right, left, or I can never change direction. Okay, so here I will call this a diagonal in the freeze. Okay, so there was also an exercise, it was exercise number, 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 number two, which is also actually related to what we just seen. Uh, it was exercise two. So compute uh, this freeze. When you put x1, x2, and then uh, deduce the next values with the freeze rule. Okay. And I can give you the, the answer, but uh, a good thing is to do it by yourself to enjoy this uh, magic uh, constellation. So here it's easy, you will find uh, one plus x2 over x1. If you want the rule to be satisfied, you want this product to be uh, one more than this product. So it gives you this expression. Then here you will find this one over x1, x2. And um, here you will get x1 plus x1 over x2. But here, already at this point, there is some this uh, consolation because if you want to, 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 to deduce this value from this other three, you will have to divide by this. So dividing by this expression, one should expect to have one plus x2 in the denominator, but there is a simplification and this one plus x2 disappear and we only have x2. Again, when I'm here, I need, if I want to compute this value, I have to do this product. And this product has to be one more than this one. So I, I will have to divide by this. So divided by this expression, one could expect some horrible expression. One could expect that the fractions become more and more complicated, but there are simplification. And at this stage, uh, what you would uh, obtain is, uh, you would obtain uh, x1 again, and then x2 again. Um, so when you do this exercise, first you can enjoy this Laurent phenomenon, simplification in the fraction. And also you prove the glide symmetry for this uh, width two. Uh, uh, freeze. Okay. <clears throat> um, so now, uh, 15 minutes, I hope I will be able to prove uh, what I wanted to prove. So proof of theorem one. So theorem one is this uh, properties, not the, the main results. Uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to start with a freeze, a conway coxeta freeze, so meaning um, filled with a uh, positive integer. Um, call the values on the first in the first row. Uh, C i so we don't know yet that it's periodic so let's just call them um, as C zero C one C two but there are also negative ones C minus one okay so it's C i for i in z and we're gonna focus on three diagonals fix uh, three consecutive diagonals. Okay, so let's uh, write something uh, like a freeze. So in the first row, I have these C's, C0, C1, C2, C3. And I want to focus on diagonal. So 
So for instance, this one, uh, I will call them uh, G. I will use the letter G for the value in this diagonal. So this is gonna be G1, this is gonna be G0. I will have G2, uh, G3, and so on. Up to some uh, GI and so on, up to some GW. That's the width uh, of the freeze. I can extend the array without changing the, the freeze rule. If I add zeros here, this doesn't uh, affect uh, the freeze rule. And I will need this extra row. So this is gonna be G minus one. Uh, and the next, this I will call F zero, I will call this F one, F two, F three, uh, F four and so on, F I and so on, F W plus one. And on the previous diagonal, I will use the letter H, H minus one, H zero, H one, H two, H3 and so on. H, uh, oh, sorry, there is H. I, the F is misplaced here. Should be a bit on the top. And so on up to H, W minus one. So then I have uh, ones again. And I can also extend with zeros here. Okay, and so what I'm saying here is that now I, um, I'm i gonna look at the quantity uh, fi plus hi over gi. And the, let's say it's a lemma. So what is, it? when I look at three uh, here, when I look at these three uh, variables, this quantity does not depend on i, it's a constant. And this is not hard to see because just use the, the freeze rule. Um, the freeze rule, what does the freeze rule say? Uh, maybe I add more value here, here I have H I plus one, sorry. Okay, if I apply the phrase rule uh, somewhere here and somewhere here, it tells me that um, I have one equals to G I F I plus one. Okay, F I plus one is here. G I plus one is here and H I plus one is here. Uh, minus uh, F I G I plus one. So that's the freeze rule applied here, but I can also apply the freeze rule here and I will have H I J I plus one um, times minus G I H I plus one. Okay, we can rewrite everything uh, without uh, negative sign, so I just change some terms from a side to another side. And then uh, I will divide okay. if I divide everything by uh, G I J I plus one. J I, uh, J I plus one, I obtain uh, that um, F I plus one plus H I plus one over J I plus one is the same as H I plus F I over J I, okay? So this uh, quantity does not depend on I and I can, look at initial and final value. And if I look at 
F naught plus H naught over G naught. This should be the same as FW, uh, maybe W plus one plus uh, HW plus one over GW plus one. But in the freeze, when I compute here, the sum of these two divided by this is C uh, zero. And at the end of the diagonals, when I compute here, uh, I, I'm here. So this is the value GW plus one. This is HW and this is HW plus one. So at the, at the end of the freeze, uh, this value is FW plus one. So what did I obtain? I obtained that the value that is here, sorry, I changed the color. The value here, the red uh, is the same as this one. And this is the first step for the, for the glide symmetry. Okay. Um, okay, let me reuse this picture. What is going on now? Uh, what I just did here, so I proved that this value is the same as this value, but of course I can shift my point of view and now use these three diagonals and using these three diagonals, I will obtain that the value here is the same as the value here. So let's put color, uh, I don't know, orange. The value that is here, I will find it here in the freeze. And then the value uh, that is here, I will find it here. But now this value is completely determined because of the freeze rule, I know these three. So the value that is here, let's change color, I don't know, pink. So this is the same as this one because they are related with the same rule and, and so on. Uh, the value here will be the same as this one, okay? So this uh, prove, uh, so the glide symmetry is proved, all right? So uh, item two, oops. item two is checked and I said that it implies item one. So now we understand the glide, the invariance under the glide reflection and we understand uh, the periodicity uh, of the trees. Okay, <clears throat> so, what do we want now? Let's go back. So this is proved. This is proved. I want to understand this property that was illustrated here. But we are almost done because um, if I go back again here. Um, in this picture. Now I can use a similar, argu similar arguments, but if I focus on diagonal like this, uh, what would I obtain? So we see similar arguments. Using diagonals in the other direction. I will find what I will find that when I 
take the sum of these two and divide by this, it is the same as the sum of these two divided by this, and it is the same as the sum of these two divided by this. So I find um, I will find say h zero plus h two over h one is the same as g zero plus g two over g one and the same as f zero plus f two over f uh, one. But f zero plus f two over f one is just c two. All right. So for my for the uh, on this main diagonal. Uh, each time I take three consecutive. So this sum of these two divided by this is C2. The sum of these two, G2 plus G4 divided by G3, it's gonna be the same as what I can read here. So it's gonna be C3 and so on. So we obtain uh, the recurrence relation. And GI equals CI times JI minus one minus JI minus two. And this is really the, the key lemma for the rest. Uh, I mean, for the main theorem, when we will prove the main theorem, we will need this relation. Uh, but for the moment, this proves uh, the property number three because we have a recurrence relation along the diagonal. And if this is a polynomial in C, and if this is a polynomial in C, this remains a polynomial in C. And the starting, the initial values are 0, 1, C1. So by induction, you will deduce uh, uh, that everything remains a polynomial. All right, so that's a way to compute uh, here. Where I, using the rule, we will have to do this product, subtract one and divide by this. But now I know that there is a recurrence relation. So I can use the recurrence relation and use C3 times this minus this. So for the next value here, I can either use the, the freeze rule, which is a, a big computation. Or now I can use the recurrence relation, I know that the value here, it is C4 times this one minus this one. So it's much easier, much faster to use the recurrence relation uh, if, we want, if one wants to compute uh, instead of the, of the rule. Okay, so, sorry, I this is a bit here. Um, so item three, three, uh, it's proved. And now, uh, what is uh, the point four? So this is actually, uh, there is a proof in the particular case of the diagonal, so that's exercise four. Uh, gives a proof, actually an explicit formula. In the particular case of uh, when the zigzag is a diagonal, meaning that if you have x1, x2, x3, and so on in diagonal, you can find a uh, explicit expression for the entries and check that there is no uh, complicated denominator, that the denominator is just a, a monomial. But we need to understand the arbitrary uh, 
case, in the case of uh, an arbitrary zigzag. And I'm um, sorry, I will have, it's gonna be very disappointing, but I don't know any elementary proof. Uh, the proof I know is based on the, the theory of cluster algebra. So I don't know if I will have time to discuss this, um, but um, actually there is a, a colloquium talk on Friday by Anya Felixson we we'll talk on quiver uh, mutation. And this is very related to this. We can uh, use quiver mutation to compute freeze. And the quiver mutation come from the cluster mutation. And you can interpret entries in the freeze as cluster variables. And the statement of four follows of uh, the theory of cluster algebra. So I am over time, so I don't want to, to discuss more, maybe, uh, in the last lecture, we could discuss uh, this connection. And um, so I'm going to stop uh, here for today. So if there are any questions. <laughs>